Hey, Bub, are you in Screw City? Hey. You screwed yourself, City? back to CNC Equipment's YouTube channel. We're back on another bulldozer project. If you guys have not seen, there's two previous videos on this thing. Of The uh, last one was an epic fail, wasn't it? <laughs> if you guys have uh, been following along, you know what I'm talking about. If not, go in the description down below and you can watch the two previous videos. But uh, basically this thing come in um, pouring out oil. So what was going on? The transmission pump was cracked and leaking. Uh, the case actually split under here split this whole case busted it it's leaking um this is actually a customer's dozer it's not mine so um i talked to the pump shop and they told me that those cases are prone to cracking so i sent them up there they put a new case in it rebuilt the other pump um you guys seen all that last video we'll put it all back together started up did i drive it 10 feet a little bit more than over there <laughs> maybe Anyway, I drove it like 10, 15 feet and she blowed up again. Yeah, it did. And it was kind of my fault, not, I don't know. Whose fault is it? We're beyond fault right now. We are. So, We're you guys remember the last video. We dug in a little deeper. There's a uh, flow bypass valve for the oil cooler. And what happened, um, there's a thermostat in here. Basically what it does, it will send oil to the tank um, until it gets to 140 degrees. And once it gets to 140, it opens up and starts sending it to the oil cooler in front. So. When it's cold, this thermostat's closed, of course. There's a bypass valve in here, right here, that uh, had come apart, turned sideways, and was sticking. So it's not letting oil back to the tank. And so, being the oil couldn't go back to the tank, it had to go somewhere. Hence, the case busted on the uh, new pump again, didn't it? So at least we found the problem. We got a brand new valve here from John Deere. Um, actually, it says Parker on it, but Kevin's going to swap over fitting, so... Yeah, it was a very expensive, very expensive mistake again on my problem. Um, I'm not going to charge the customer for that other pump case because I feel that, I mean, we probably should have learned from our mistake, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I could be like some other shops and charge them again, but uh, I'm going to charge them for this valve because that was an issue, but I'm going to eat it on this um, new pump case and all that stuff. I'm not going to go back and charge them for that. Um, I'm going to call it a lesson learned in my book, so... I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below is the right thing to do on that. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, basically, we're out a couple thousand dollars for a pump case, and we got labor putting this thing back together and all that good stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. Keep everybody happy. Um, Kevin's going to get that stuff swapped over. And then I guess we're about ready to slam that um, pump in there for the second or third time, I guess. What are you doing here? Ah, I kind of showed up. He works here. Did I tell everybody I just got back from vacation? We went on a family vacation together. That's right, bud. I'll hold, I'll, I'll hold you. Two weeks and I come back to this mess. What are you doing down there? Putting your little valve in? Somebody touched my butt. Did they? Yeah. Don't. I need to report to HR. <laughs> You're looking at them. <laughs> Were we supposed to put that in now? What's that? This? Yeah, that goes in first. Okay. Why are they taking our forklift? Um, they don't understand the procedure that's about to take place. <laughs> hey, Bub, are you in Screw City? Hey. You screwed yourself, City? <laughs> I, got, I gotta keep an eye on just, you. It was just so Somebody, I could... You were trying to overachieve and put lines on. I was getting stuff done up here. There's an order you gotta put stuff in. It's, you, this, it's tight quarters. You guys watched the previous videos. I felt like we I got was really a couple, getting something good done. A couple bolts that's got to go down through there first, and then that line can go on. Hunter, we're about ready for the fork truck. I got that hooked up. The guys are over here working on some uh, undercarriage on the 700J. You guys seen us do plenty of these in the local logger. Tucker's over here welding the sprocket segments together so they uh, don't walk loose.
Oh, are you ready? I had to go take a break while your butt was in the way. <laughs> Alright, we'll get this thing put up in here. Now thread the needle, bud. Thread the needle. Come on in. Alright, go down. What are you doing? Eating snacks over there? <laughs> hey, I already got your bolt in for you. You're welcome. Mm, wow. I know I'm a super nice guy. So, uh, I think we'll just set our people up on time lapse. Okay. Because they've probably seen us do this like seven times, two times before. Hmm. We don't want to bore them. Yeah. We got a whole lot of lines. We got to put the rear hydraulic pump on, and, uh, and then we'll uh, be back after this quick little time lapse. It's going to be just that easy. Alright, we got all the hoses on the two main pumps, we think. We only had one we couldn't figure out. We had to go back and watch a video <laughs> on YouTube <laughs> of our own. So we got that. Next thing we got is a high dog pump. We're going to try to stab it on there before lunch. Because it's Friday and we got to lunch. and mm -hmm. We know what happens after we eat lunch. We don't need no accidents on the tracks. We'd have to get some more pig mats out, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Just wear one. <laughs> <laughs> A diaper. <laughs> All right, I think we'll get a we'll get a strap and hunter back in the back, and I think these are the bolts up here. At least I'm gonna say they are. We'll get after it. Are you just doing this all by yourself? I didn't. Even... I mean, while well, you were signing autographs, I figured we better do something here. Hang on. Let me put these people up here while you're in the biggest bind in the world. It's the things we do for people. Why don't you go down a little bit? Don't feel no teeth. Go in there, you little bleep de bleep. There she went. Just like that. I suppose you want some bolts. See, I'm gonna get all mine in, so I screw you, see? Put one in the sausage. Sausage fingers engaged.
Next. Can you lift up on the back a little bit? Uh uh. Okay. There you go. Where you been? Uh, I've been taking care of business. <laughs> While you were taking the Browns to the Super Bowl, we need a three-quarter inch, bub, so we can tighten this up. Put this on. Kevin's coming in the back with the mega extension to tighten up the bolts. No, sure. Got enough extensions there, bud. You might need one more. Really? He's short. All right, I want to put this on here. He's gonna tighten those up, and then. Uh, I think we'll dump some oil in it and maybe try it out here again. Okay. No, oh, Bob, she's slipping from my hands. <laughs> How you doing, Hunter? I'm doing great. Oh, so, we are not putting AW46 in here. You guys remember, no, we're not because we're going to get haters. We're putting 1540 engine oil back in. The reason we're pouring it out of these buckets, we had all new oil in there actually saved it and uh, we're putting it back in so hey speaking of haters maybe you should show them your new hater present oh yeah i did get it. let me go over and get some viewer sent me a diesel jug gotta find it so we've had so many haters about us using a red gas can to pour oh, diesel fuel is. into stuff we had this super nice viewer sent us a <laughs> i don't know why it's yellow though yellow diesel fuel it's can i've never color. seen it's a yellow can right here so you guys have been watching our channel. We're always filling stuff up. We have nothing gas around here, but we have gas cans and apparently I don't think I've ever owned a yellow diesel jug in my life. But we do now. But we appreciate whoever sent that to us. Yeah. Now I know the random uh, Facebook comment I got if I received my uh, yellow jug yet and I was on vacation. I'm like, no, I ain't seen it. So thank you very much for that. We'll definitely be using that now. No more comments. I've gotten so many comments about that, but you know what? I keep doing it because comments drive views on my videos. <laughs> now our ratings are going to go in the toilet. Oh. All right, we're going to go eat lunch, and we'll come back and fire this thing up, and hopefully we don't bust the pump into again. All right, got a little bonus clip. We're uh, about ready to fire that thing up, but uh, the guys are putting tracks on here like I showed you earlier. We're going to throw the tracks on it, drive it up here, and we can back this one out. You guys remember that thing was sitting over there over the pit. We moved it to the forklift, but we thought we'd bring you guys along here a little bonus stuff. Throw some uh, rails on there. You guys are going to get that jacked up a little better. Are you using your girth? <laughs> Randy's cleaning up the uh, grease and stuff off the alligator links. I'll slide them under with the forklift and we'll fasten them up. Then we'll drive that thing forward. This is one of the reasons why I poured this concrete out here doing this kind of stuff. We got plenty of room to drag out, wind stuff up, shove in without getting gravel and stuff mixed up in it. Doing good, doing good. All right, I got that side on there. We'll do it. We'll do the other side and pull her up.
Then I drive that dude up that way. And we'll fire up this thing. See if she works. Track's a little loose, bud. Uh, I like it loose to make sure it don't wear down. How do you like driving a bulldozer with one cleat on each side? It can be a little rocky. It's a little squirrely. It steers itself. All right, the boys are gonna work on putting pads on that. We're getting back on this. We're getting sidetracked. Bonus clips. Let's try it. What? Gonna you were gonna you say something. I was gonna ask you a question. Ask me a question. Did Everybody's helping with that or that. Dad. Like so this situation over here can go bad by the time it gets right here so if it makes it outside the shop we're good sounds like a better helping with that i don't want to be in that that scenario it's a trilogy bob we're going for three so i gotta take this out i gotta calibrate the transmission get it warm first and try to calibrate it uh, if everything's good we'll come back and put the winch on it you guys remember the previous video this thing's out of winch somewhere if jay's not sold it We'll get that put on there, and uh, we'll put it on the right way. If you guys remember the first video, it had some parts in the wrong spot, didn't it? We still got parts on here yet. That's hey, hard. you know this what I've not said side. in the last few videos? What? About our super sweet Harbor Freight Tools giveaway. Oh. If you guys don't know, most of you probably do. We're giving away a whole toolbox full of Harbor Freight Tools here. I go find me. We're giving this away. How to enter it? You can go down in the description below. There'll be a link to it. You got to watch the videos. A few, few simple steps you got to do, and uh, you can win this whole toolbox loaded full of tools. We're basically um, going to use it for a year and do a test on it. Right? We're going to let you guys know how it holds up. And don't worry, everybody's been complaining they're going to get wore out tools. You know what me and he's going to do? We're going to go in there and back and re We're going to we're going to take all these tools back and replace them. So. You guys are going to have all brand new tools. So, but uh, so far they've been doing pretty good. We got a couple issues, but we'll probably do minor a uh, issue. minor issues, not not the major. Um, we'll probably do a little uh, little up to date uh, how things have been going here in another month or two. But uh, yeah, we'll see if this thing fires up. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Contact. seat down yep. and we'll see what kind of party we're gonna have yep let me spray this down with some brake cleaner too and dry it off are you here to see what's going on no I'm here to talk about some insurance issues oh snap you should be talking about your channel on my channel so more people go watch your channel Organically. Organically. If you got, want to see more behind the scenes stuff that is up to date. Oh, up to date. I showed it to you first. Go yeah. to Miss CNC's channel. What's it called? Your channel? Mrs. Froze Mrs. Up? Clinton. Mrs. Clint of CNC. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you want to go see like some that. up to date. Just tag it. Just tag it and we'll also. I'll put it in the description below. Yeah. If I remember. You have a fun time. And you get to see these guys too, and you get to see behind. I the will scenes. warn you that she does a lot of talking, and I just fast forward to it till I see pictures of me or Kevin. And it's so hurtful. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, he's watching my show. I could watch a 45 minute video in like five minutes. <clears throat> no, two minutes. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> two minutes. It's hurtful, but I I church through it because my my um, people really like to be there. They yeah. choose to be there. Yeah. So my videos are out couple months at sometimes which we just come back from vacation which I hadn't had a camera in my hand for three weeks so it was nice but that's why you guys get videos every two weeks but she's up to date not me I'm, I'm like a week behind but I don't get one every week almost like okay now we're talking too much people don't like that time. that's enough <laughs> let's start this thing up and see what happens uh, 
hopefully the drainage don't blow up. There's Jeff Bob. Let's see whether this is going to become a trilogy or just a sequel. Oh, it's moving. Checking the RPMs on both the track motors, they are reading through the computer back here, so they are working at the moment. Hopefully, when it gets calibrated, it'll drive straight. because that thermostat will open up and that valve is circulating through the cooler here so we'll see what happens. Alright so it got up here at about 153 or so it's cooling down now. Dropping down. 
I mean, that, that uh, cooler's working. So, you guys have seen probably in the past, I've calibrated these things. So these earlier ones, you got to do through the transmission controller. If you have buttons, you do it through the transmission controllers. If there's no buttons on here, then you can do it through the dash. But this one is going to be through the uh, transmission controller. It says CAL. It stands for calibration. We're going to select that. I think we got to hold it down for a few seconds. So what's going to happen, we're going to do two separate calibrations, basically. We're going to do a sensor calibration on all the steering controls, the accelerator, and the speed inputs. And then we will do a pump calibration. We'll set you and run it wide open. It's going to calibrate the pump, then we'll drive forward and backwards. I've covered this on some previous videos, but um, told us to put the park brake down. We're going to go through all these. I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff. And uh, we'll be back. Alright, we passed the sensor test. We're doing the uh, pump calibration right now. After that's finished, then we'll do the track test. Oh, uh, there's two videos on my channel. One of uh, calibrating the transmission on these smaller dozers, and there's one on the 750s and 850s. You can go back and search for those. I'll try to link them in the description if I remember. But right now it says reverse. We're doing the reverse calibration on the pumps. That gets done, we'll save that, and then we'll go to tracking. It's taking quite a while to reverse, I'm guessing it's probably going to pop a code up. Probably something I've adjusted. I'm creeping backwards now, and I'm not doing anything. It's not happy. It says neutral. Well, we passed that part. I don't know if you guys can see there, but it's just twisting and turning to the left. We've got a code up F3A8. So we'll have to go in there and pull it up. I'm guessing we're going to have to do some adjusting on the uh, valves down there. The pressure's not right. We'll get it back in the shop and see what's up. down these codes it's a NASCAR edition it just wants to turn left Is that right? so I'm gonna look those codes up I'm pretty sure I know what they are um, we're probably gonna have to throw some gauges on here and uh, balance those spool valves out there's a spool valve in there it's got to be balanced out left to right usually the pump guys get them but man we've uh, split those pumps apart and uh, they got done separate times. It could have something to do with it. So I'll look those up and we'll be back. Wait, Mason's got a signed hat? Yeah. Who signed it? I Ever. did. Scott did. Really? Yeah. That, that ought to be worse than money. Uh-huh. So, I'll look these codes up. The first one's shown for a right-hand speed sensor. In that video later, earlier, I said that the speed was reading off that, so I don't know if that's an old code that didn't get erased. The other four codes are exactly what I thought these were for those uh, spools that balance out. So there's a spool up here, the electrical magnet moves back and forth, and say it has 250 pounds of pressure on each side of it. If one side gets more than 5 psi difference on the differential, say if one side's 260 and the other side's 254 it's going to throw a code on so they have to be 5 psi or less so 
I've got a gauge here. We'll go down these two ports. I'll show you guys. Got a gauge plumbed up here into the center. If you notice, I got two shutoff valves here. So what we'll do, we'll open one side up. That's going to send the pressure up to the gauge. Say it may be at 250. We're going to then shut that one off, and we'll open this side up. And if it's more pressure, it's going to go up more. If it's lower, to drop down, you know, to 240 or whatever. So there's a little uh, balancing thing in there. We'll have to take a little Allen wrench adjust it until we get that differential sitting pretty much at zero. Be zero, one, or two PSI, but if it gets at six PSI, it throws a code and will not let you calibrate it until you get that fixed. If you get all that fixed, we'll go back through all those steps again and uh, hopefully it works. So we'll jump up here and show you where those adjust at. I'll try to kind of show you. So this is, there's two wires going into this electric spool. It, it or electric magnet. It moves a spool in here which tells the pump which way to go forward or backwards. That spool has to be balanced in neutral. It's got more pressure on one side or the other, it's going to creep one way or the other. So um, we're going to pull this plug out, that plug out, throw our gauges in there, and if it's off, we can pop this screw out right here and adjust that pressure. We have to do it with the dozer running, of course, and it's nice and hot. Hmm, who did that? I don't know. We're supposed to get it hot or something. Hmm. Hey, this would be good on the NASCAR tracks. It just turns left. Oh, yeah. Look at these Harbor Freight lifetime warranty tools I got here for you. So we got one here, and then the other one's up here where it's not convenient. So we'll show you the easy one first. Too small. Now you got to spend 10 minutes and get that back on the rack. I got some of these rails at my house, but I just never brought them in for you. You don't want to. You don't want to bring them into work. <laughs> share the share the wealth. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna spew oil out. I gotta get my stuff ready. This gauge. I did make this gauge. I feel like you John did. Deere has their own special gauge called the JD4816. You like that number and just come up with? I got the CNC001 gauge here. It works just fine. <laughs> you like that? It's fine. <laughs> and so we're going to start this dude up and uh, I think we have to release the parking brake. And then we're going to switch those valves like I said earlier. We got to get that balanced in 5 psi or less. Ooh, okay. Are you ready? Yes. She love liquid filled gauges. You gotta turn this here valve on.
closer. checked it high idle so I get it close to the idle and then I'll rev it up we'll get that thing where that needle doesn't hardly move back or forth when we switch those and we'll repeat the process for the other one all right we got we checked the front one too the front one's okay the back one was out of adjustment that's the pump we just put in there um, I'm guessing they may have not run it back through the uh, test stand had them all tested they probably didn't run it back through the balances so we've got to go out there again now it's driving straight on its own we got to go out there, there again and do that complete calibration and uh, hopefully it passes if it finds something else wrong we'll have to go after it now it threw coats for both pumps for some reason but the pressure was fine on that front pump but sometimes they'll do stuff like that so codes we did check the front one it was all balanced out i'm guessing when they swapped that case on the rear one they didn't retest it which i can't blame them too much i was kind of under a funny crunch they just switched parts but i'll uh, run through the calibration again and be back well that didn't fix it um tried to go out there it's still turning to the left i even tried to calibrate it it's reading speed on both the speed sensors. You guys don't know these have a speed sensor on uh, each drive motor back here. Just a normal looking speed sensor. I keep them in stock because they are famous for going bad. Um, but usually they read speed. We're throwing the same four codes, the same four codes it was earlier, with the exception of that speed sensor. Um, and it's for those valves we just adjusted. So what we're going to do, I've got this jumper made up here. We're going to swap the uh, speed sensors from left to right, switch them around, see if the problem goes to the other side. If it does, that tells me that it's probably that speed sensor. But usually if those things are reading RPMs up there, it's good. So um, if it doesn't change it, I'm going to start leaning towards that transmission controller being wacky up there. Those are famous for going bad too. These dozers are getting old. This one's close to 20 years old and computers don't last forever, especially in dozers without cabs on them. So we're gonna get this uh, jumper put on here. See if the problem right now, it's pulling to the left. Um, if it starts pulling to the right after you put this on, then we might be in good shape. It may just be a speed sensor. Did you get the one plugged in? The one wire is long enough to reach the other side. Thankfully, this is the same as the 850Js and stuff we mess with all the time. So, what Kevin's done, he's put the left and the right and the right and the left. So, we'll see what happens with that. I thought about that. It may happen. It's a NASCAR edition, so it's not our speed sensors because it didn't change it. So it's interesting. I think I may have another transmission controller that's rebuilt. So I'm a John Deere guy. I think we may try that if I got one sitting back here. These things aren't cheap.
We'll, uh, I'll see what I got. We may try that before we go troubleshooting some more. I've done enough of these that the way it's acting, that may be the problem. Guess what I found, Mr. Kevin? A rebuilt, rebuilt, um, rebuilt transmission controller. So you can buy these new from John Deere. They're about $4,500 now. Ooh, girl. Um, I get these rebuilt in North Carolina. Industrial Electronic Repair, Kernersville, North Carolina. You look them up on the internet. I've had them rebuilt quite a few. Had good luck so far. I sent a few people to them. I know one guy had some issues, but I don't know if it's them or what. But they're uh, about a third of the price of new, or a quarter of the price, I should say. They come with a one-year warranty, but I'm not sure that's what our problem is yet. But we will find out shortly. The problem with these things, they'll keep popping up codes and just keep chasing and chasing and chasing and come back to over and over again. And a lot of times it's just that crazy transmission controller right there. Brain box, bub. Brain box does it all, so that controls your transmission. This one doesn't look terrible. Like that one looks way worse than. What happens, these things usually get corroded and just come apart, but that's what it is. I'll send this one off and get it rebuilt. Alright, we got the other controller in there. So I can't get this controller to calibrate, but it's not throwing up all those codes. Guess what this one's not reading? The right hand speed sensor now. The other one was reading it. It's throwing a code for that. The only code is popping up. Got two left pumps in it. But it won't pass that second calibration, which don't have anything to do with that. I don't know. We'll uh, look at it Monday, probably throw a right hand speed sensor in it, I suppose, and start over from scratch. Maybe to fix itself over the weekend. All right, back on the old dozer again today. We finally got it figured out. We end up putting that uh, right hand track speed sensor in it. For whatever reason, the original computer was not reading it, or was reading it. The rebuilt one we put in it was not reading it. So I put the rebuilt one in it, put that new track speed sensor in it, tried to, tried to calibrate it, still would not calibrate, we had to adjust a couple more things on the pump, still couldn't get to do it, I put the old original transmission computer back in it and got it to calibrate the first time, so I don't know what's going on with that other computer, it might not be rebuilt right, um, these things are finicky when they get old and that stuff like that, so a lot of times you just got to keep doing it. Um, my next plan of attack I've had this happen before you can calibrate them on the ground like this it's usually better if you can do them on the ground they'll track straighter in my opinion but uh, John Deere says you can also jack them up off the ground so I've done that before and uh, calibrate them that way so sometimes you gotta try it both ways I've heard of guys actually pulling them to make them go straight with another machine just to get them to pass calibration we've uh, also sometimes you can shut them off during the last stage of calibration and uh, fool the computer. Um, these older ones you can't do that on. I know the 850s and stuff you can do that on sometimes, but you never know. There's a lot of tricks to them, but uh, we've got all our gauges and stuff off here. Uh, we're going to put all this back together and then throw the winch back on it. So we don't really know what it was, do we? Sometimes you just got to start throwing parts at them. But somebody kept this. Is there anything There's left on it? Just enough. Oh, we could get that around a little. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to get the rest of it put back together.
All right, we got her all on there, tested the winch out, made sure everything was working fine on it, checked the wool, got the log arch on it, cables, I think that chain come with it. We even got a few spare parts left over, so we know we did our job right. We uh, replaced some bolts. I don't like using old bolts and wrong sizes, put new stuff in there for them, so. But uh, yeah, this one's been a doozy for sure. I guess third time's a charm, so I'm gonna take it outside, run it just a little bit more, make sure everything's okay, don't have any leaks on the winch or anything. And this project will be a wrap so hopefully everybody liked the little three-part series you've not seen those first two parts make sure you go back and watch those and if you want to see more cool stuff make sure you subscribe like and subscribe and call jay because we got some dozers just like it's coming in don't we we do we'll probably probably be sold before the video comes out but we got plenty we got plenty so, as always we've got uh, new and used winches in stock so log arches all that stuff so if you guys need something for one of your dozers hit us up so we uh, appreciate everybody watching